All right, hey guys. In today's video, I'm gonna be showing you how to record gameplay of any of your games using your um, integrated GPU as opposed to your dedicated graphics card. By doing this, you will actually be able to uh, have your CPU's built-in GPU render everything. And when it's rendering everything, your normal GPU will be able to handle all your actual game performance and you won't lose hardly any FPS at all. So now, what do you need to do this? Well, of course, you'll need a normal GPU to actually run the game because you can't have two uh, GPUs doing the same thing. The second thing you'll need is you'll need to have, let's see if I can find it here. See, what you, you need to have an Intel graphics card that has its own dedicated GPU that supports QuickSync. Now, which ones support QuickSync? Uh, I'm not sure exactly. I know the i7 line does. I have an i7 from a couple years ago. As you can see, it has an integrated graphics 400. Uh, it's the i7-3770K is what I'm using. Let's, but yeah, if you have a pretty high-end Intel GPU, like the uh, I think the i5s might be able to do this as well, but I know the i7 definitely can. Um, what you'll need to do is you'll need to actually go into your BIOS and tell it to enable the integrated graphics card. By default, your setting will probably say, if there's a graphics card plugged in, like this one, my HD 7970, uh, don't use this GPU. So you have to go into your BIOS, check your manual for how to do this, go into your BIOS and actually say enable built-in uh, GPU or enable uh, Intel GPU or say something like that it'll be different between things but all you need to do is just enable that then when you boot up make sure your monitor is still plugged into your normal graphics card um, and then you'll see these two options right here when you go into computer management and make sure you actually have it here you go again click on the start button click on right click on computer go to manage and go to device manager and under display adapters you now see two things integrated on uh, sorry intel hd whatever and your normal graphics card <clears throat> if for some reason you still don't see that i guess you'll have to just kind of contact your motherboard manufacturer or manufacturer or whoever made your computer and they should be able to tell you how to turn it on um, this only works for intel graphics intel cpus that have a built-in graphics card of course because what else is it going to process the graphics on uh, this has to be done with a graphics card. So normally this Intel uh, HD 7 400 part will be going to waste because it's not processing any graphics but this time you'll actually be able to u get use out of it. Alright, so now the kind of tricky part about this is the only thing I really absolutely hate is if you're running Windows 7 like I am, you just saw here, uh, I'm running Windows 7, uh, you will have to have a monitor plugged into your integrated graphics card. Now what does that mean? That means you have to go find an old monitor in your garage or closet or whatever. Any monitor has to be plugged, and it, and it can't be the one you're gaming on either, so that's kind of stupid, but I mean, you can find a, a decent, like, uh, even flat screen monitor that's like 12 inches or whatever online for like 30, 40 bucks. Anyway, it has to be plugged into one of the ports on the back of your computer that is for your Intel graphics card. On Windows 8, from what I heard, you don't have to do that, but you'll get a note. You'll get an error if you if you if you um re if it's required and you don't have anything plugged in. But again, just go ahead and plug something in. The ports on your graphics card are going to be lower down on your computer. The ports for the integrated thing will be higher up. They'll be next to your USB ports and your mouse and keyboard ports and all that stuff. So once you have something plugged into your integrated graphics card. Again, that's separate from the, your um, standard graphics card, which will probably be lower down on your computer. It will be actually separate and have a bunch of different imports. Once you have a monitor plugged into both, one for your games, which is this one, and one that's just sitting there so your integrated graphics card will be active. That's another one. Again, Windows 8 should not require some to be plugged in, so that will help you out a lot with Windows 8 users and Windows 10 when it comes out. That's what I'm looking forward to for Windows 10, not having to have anything plugged in. All right, that's step one. We got this set up. We got it um, ready. Um, you'll want to have the latest driver for Intel. Uh, you should be able to just click on here and click update driver. If that doesn't work or if for some reason you're still having problems with the next part of setup, uh, you can go here, Intel's uh, driver update website. Uh, once you have the latest driver, I've been running the same driver for a couple years and it's been working just fine, but you still want to have the latest driver just so you don't run into any problems. You can run through this, and it will. Should, and when you download the program from th this website, it should give you this, and it should be like, okay, we're going to search for any drivers you have. Let's, let's go ahead to the next part. Next part thing you'll need to do is have Open Broadcast software up. And uh, as you can see, I'm actually recording with Open Broadcast software over here. I'm running two versions because I'm cool. Um, you'll want to actually set up 
your recording to use the Intel graphics card. Uh, of course, you'll have to have, like I said, the monitor hooked up, or if you're running Windows 8, you don't. But after you do, once you start up Open Broadcast Software, after you do that, sorry, that's a little bit confusing. After your mod after your graphics card, that's the in Intel one, is properly set up, you should be able to click Settings, go to Encoding. You should now have an option for Quick Sync. By default, you'll be on X264. That's a good encoder; it gives you a little bit better quality. But you want to use Quick Sync because Quick Sync actually will use your uh, Intel uh, GPU, the integrated GPU. So once you go ahead and click that, you'll actually be able to be using the QuickSync GPU, which means it will be rendering on your CPU's built-in graphics card as opposed to your normal graphics card. This means you'll have a lot less, um, a lot less frame drops in your game. So you'll be able to run it on a much higher frame rate and still record it 60 frames per second. So for an example, I'm going to show you guys, uh, let me just go ahead and save this. We'll, we'll do this one first. We'll do it on X.264. And then I'll switch over to Quick Sync. And I'll label both of them for you guys so you can see what the difference is. So the first thing you want to do is Quick Sync. You want to make sure you have a high bit rate so you don't so you can still get pretty good quality. I choose to go with 9,500. And for audio quality, I usually I always use 320 because it's the best quality for uh, MP3s and stuff. I'm using AAC, but you know I use MP3s for um, 320, so I just use the same as the highest you can go. Stereo, of course. 4800 kilohertz, that doesn't really matter. It'll ask you if you want to save, just go ahead and click yes. Um, this is for open broadcast software, I don't know if Fraps or anything else supports this, so sorry about that. Uh, make sure your file path is set up right. Oh, where is that? Broadcast settings. Uh, here we go. You can have your replay buffer, whatever. Alright, so let's go ahead and. Oh, uh, the other important thing is. Where is it? Push or talk, that's kind of important. You'll now have a quick sync encoder thing right here. And for a quick sync uh, preset is in advanced. Um, priority, you'll want to have this at least above normal. For video quality, I highly suggest best quality. Um, you may have to change a little bit again if you're dropping frames or you can't record good well enough. Uh, your frame rate will be right here. Right now I'm recording at 30 FPS. Uh, but you can change your frame rate to 60 FPS. I'll show you that too. So remember, best quality, encoding uh, high quality, and where is frame rate again? I keep forgetting. Uh, let's take a look at quick encode. CBR means um, constant bit rate. That's the best option. That means you'll get the same uh, quality throughout. It will produce pretty high uh, high size files, but it's okay. Just get a big hard drive. <laughs> now go to video, and here you go. In video, this is where you set your frames per second. So if you want to record in 60 frames per second, again, not all Intel GP, uh, CPU, GPU combos will be able to do this, but my i7 from a couple years ago can, so you'll, again, have to play around with this a little bit. Alright, I'm going to try to keep this video under 10 minutes, because my videos are usually long, but I'm trying to be as detailed as possible. Make sure you have your baseline resolution set up. Uh, if you want to downscale to 720p, there's an option for that, just pick uh, this right here. That will give you a different, a smaller video size, but base resolution is what it's actually recording at. So if you downscale it, that won't change your uh, FPS that you're recording at. That will just change the uh, video, the output video size. Disable error is good if you're doing uh, screen captures for things like tutorials or stuff. But this is mainly for people who are trying to record gameplay footage. So now we have this set to 60 FPS. Let's go ahead and click OK. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and switch off this recording, and I'm going to only record gameplay footage. So now that we're set up, you want to of course go to game record. Uh, we're going to do some CSGO. Let's go to CSGO. Alright, and first thing I'm going to do is show you what it's like without it. So we're going to go back to encoding. I'm going to change it to two, uh, sorry, hex 264 and I'll give you a little commentary on what my recording FPS is and what the game's FPS is, which you'll be able to see on screen. So let's go ahead and jump right into that right now. Hey, wait a second. This isn't CSGO. Yeah, well, I'll come. So you may be saying to yourself, hey, wait, this isn't CSGO. Well, you'd be... Oh, come on. Yeah, you'd be right. Um, this is not CSGO. This is Insurgency. And as you can see, I'm getting a pretty low FPS while recording, and it keeps cutting out. So I actually had to turn the recording down to 30 FPS to make it even actually usable. And as you can see, my FPS in-game is pretty miserable and the recording keeps stopping so 
and if we look far away, it completely freezes. So, not so great. This is using the default settings, and this is using my um, 7970. It's a pretty expensive graphics card. Um, but if I'm looking at my display, you can't actually see this because it's uh, not captured. Uh, I am using up 96% of my GPU, and it jumps back down. And basically, it, my GPU completely fills up this load when it's actually recording. And oh, look at dude. And as soon as it um, stops recording, it jumps back down to 30%. Like every time it freezes, it jumps down to 30%. So yeah, if you're trying to record even like gameplay like this, it's not even a super intensive game. This is Source Engine right here. Um, it's not really ideal, even on 30 FPS. I, I know this is, I'm using high recording quality, so you probably have to end up dropping your quality quite a bit, and you also have to probably drop your game uh, FPS and your game uh, detail uh, in order to get it to record this card. So, not great, but I mean, that's what you'd have to do if you didn't have an integrated GPU. So now let's do the same performance. I'm not going to close any other applications, so same amount of free memory, same amount of everything. Uh, we're going to record at 60 FPS, which is twice as much, using my uh, integrated in Intel GPU. And let's jump back into that. I'm not even going to close the game. The game's going to keep running. Alright, now we're back, and we're using the uh, QuickSync GPU. Uh, I don't know if you can really notice any difference in quality. The entire video is going to be rendered at the same quality, so... Um, yeah. It's, I'm running, it's recording at straight up 60 FPS right now, and I'm still getting a pretty decent FPS in game. As you can see right now, it's, it's, there's no server lag because I'm hosting this locally. Um, oh, look at dude. That should be my catchphrase, oh, look at dude. <laughs> said that twice already. But yeah, I mean, it's recording pretty much flawlessly. I'm looking at my uh, FPS counter for my recording right now. It's dead on 60. My GPU is at uh, 98%. So, and my CPU is only at 71. So pretty much my GPU can use all its power to process just the game. It has no problems with detail, no choppiness or anything like that. So, I mean, yeah, Quick Sync makes a huge difference. Like, you have no idea how much difference. Well, I guess you do now because you're watching this video. You're seeing a like, huge difference in recording. Again, no other programs are closed. The game's still running. I didn't close anything on my computer. All I did was switch the encoder. And also getting extremely high bit rate too. Still getting my, uh, I'm getting like 9,300. So I'm not getting the true full 950 that I uh, asked for. But I mean, it's still, I think it looks pretty good in the recording. And you're still um, able to get 60 FPS. Remember, this is double. If you want to see, just real quick, I'll go, I'll switch it to 30. I don't know if I can do that without um, stopping the recording, but I'll see if it's possible. All right, here we are at 30 FPS. As you see, on my in-game FPS is actually jumping to like over 100. Um, that's just because my CPU is freed up a little bit. But I mean, still, it I I just went from uh, going from 30 to 60, and it doesn't miss a beat. Like I think my encoder, uh, yeah, my encoder seems to be getting a little bit higher bit rate because it has less work to do. But I mean, we're, we're recording at half the FPS we were before, and the game's still running pretty much the same. Which just shows the show that the, using that Intel integrated GPU that you actually paid money for, uh, you're actually getting your money for it now. Because it's actually doing something. It's helping you record your games better. So whether you're recording 30 FPS or 50 FPS, you still get really good performance out of this thing. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoy this. Uh, if you have more questions, I don't know if I can answer everything, since you know uh, there's a billion different graphics cards out there. A billion different uh, Intel cards out there. Uh, I don't know if I, I don't, probably don't have all the diesels for all of them. But if you need help setting up Quick Sync, just the Quick Sync part, or getting uh, the drivers installed or whatever, you can probably uh, email Intel or wherever your computer came from and say like, oh, this is in Quick Sync's not working, or ask them if Quick Sync is supported. But like, again, all you should have to do is uh, step one, download the drivers. Uh, step two, restart your computer in Quick. Actually, no, you'll have to. Sorry, 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 sorry. You have to first go into your BIOS and enable the integrated graphics card to run at all times because by default it will switch to your um, your dedicated graphics card. So you have to make sure that's enabled. You might want to give it, if your uh, BIOS has the option to give it some more RAM, like say how much memory is dedicated to the integrated graphics card, I say give it at least half a gig. I think I gave mine an entire gigabyte of my RAM just for a little bit better performance. But uh, pretty much all you have to do is just give it some RAM, make sure it's turned on. And then you, you go in here, make sure your drivers are up to date, of course, because if you're your first time running, you probably have some really old drivers. 
um, once your drivers are up to date, all you have to do is just enable it in OBS or whatever software supports it and you're pretty much good to go. I mean, this is like a night and day difference for those of you who don't have super high-end graphics cards. I mean, you can pretty much get all your performance that you would on maybe losing 10 FPS, maybe, um, from what I'm not recording. So, um, actually no, I think I might be missing a few more, but it's still, I don't remember exactly what my FPS is from before. But, you will lose some FPS, yes. But, I mean, recording at 60 FPS without losing super performance, and, I mean, it's just, it's just mind-blowing. So, definitely, if you're one of those people who want to record your gameplay, this is definitely how to do it. There's no other, like, really way to record this high quality without having a super beefy GPU. So, alright, um, and especially at this high of quality and high frame rate. So alright, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you know anyone else who has an integrated, uh, who has an Intel GPU that supports this, uh, just go ahead and send them this video because I'm sure it'll help them out too. Alright, I hope you guys enjoyed this video on Intel QuickSync okay, and I'll see you guys later. Bye.